Good afternoon, I'm Dion Jennings, president of the Bessie Smith Cultural Center and a member of the Chancellor's Multicultural Advisory Council here at UTC. It is a privilege to welcome each of you to this very special event. We are here today to honor the memory of James Mann, a man who changed the face of this community and our region. I know that most everyone here probably has a story about how Mr. Mapp changed the lives of individuals. This event would not have been possible without the people who planned this rededication and open house. The planning committee was comprised of UTC faculty and staff, as well as local community members. Thank you to the planning committee for all of your hard work, your great ideas, and your mock spirit. And now, Carlos Williams, pastor of Orchard Knob Baptist Church, where Mr. Mapp and his family attended church for many years, will provide our invocation. Shall we pray? Mighty and great and sovereign God, we invoke your presence we simply ask now that you would let your glory be revealed in this place. Let your spirit of unity, love, and peace rule, reign, and abide with us in this time. Thank you for the life legacy of Brother Mapp. Thank you for his family. Thank you for his spirit. We pray, God, that this time of gathering will be a reminder of those who will make a difference in this community, that they will sacrifice their lives. So we pray, God, that we will remember the words that if I can help somebody as I pass along, then my living shall not be in vain. Thank you now. And we ask these blessings in the mighty, magnificent, and majestic name of Jesus. We do pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Williams. As you can probably imagine, when word got out that UTC was rededicating this building in the memory of Mr. Matt, and that we would be holding this event here today, many, many people lined up to take part. Everyone knew Mr. Matt and wanted to be a part in honoring his legacy. I'm glad that I did not have the task of winnowing down the list of today's speaker, that that was not left up to me, but trust and believe that the privilege to introduce each of our speakers today is certainly an honor. Dr. Stephen Engel, who is well known in our community as the Chancellor here at UTC, unfortunately is out sick with the flu. And if you know Chancellor Engel, you know that he has to be sick to miss an event such as this. But he certainly sends his regards to everyone here today. City of Chattanooga Mayor Andy Burke, well he really needs no introduction. Dr. Tommy Brown is Professor Emerita in Social Work from UTC a former Tennessee state representative, and a well-known civil rights champion. Moses Freeman serves as Chattanooga City Council, representing UTC in the ML King neighborhoods, and was recently honored to become chairman of city council, so congratulations. Brenda Mapp Hackett is Mr. Mapp's daughter and represents the entire Mapp family. And Dr. Richard Brown, executive vice chancellor, of finance, operations, and information technology here at UTC will provide not only the welcome, but will end the program with a very special announcement. Now it is my pleasure to invite Dr. Brown to the podium. And again, we say good afternoon to all of you who are present today. I'm Richard Brown, the Executive Vice Chancellor for Finance and Operations here at UTC. And as previously announced, Chancellor Engel is home in bed with the flu, and we're glad he's home in bed. <laughs> I spoke with his wife, Dominique, and he said that Steve is just trying to get some rest, and we really do wish him well. We know it's tough because he really did want to be here today, but we're grateful that he is using some good common sense and taking good care of himself today. Uh, I'm also honored to represent him, and on behalf of the faculty, staff, and students at the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga, we extend our warmest welcome to all of you, to the Honorable Mayor Burke, certainly to the Chair of the City Council, new elected Chair Moses Freeman, 
and to my special friend, Dr. Tommy Brown, who has served the faculty here for many, many years, and of course the distinguished MAP family, including Miss Betty. <laughs> we say welcome to you and a big, healthy Go Mox welcome to all of you. I want to thank all of you for visiting with us today. This event is co-sponsored by the Chancellor's Multicultural Advisory Council, which is chaired by Travis Lytle. I also want to thank Dion Jennings for being a member of our Multicultural Advisory Committee and for agreeing to serve as our MC today. Ms. Jennings is the Executive Director of the Bessie Smith Cultural Center. Can we give her a big hand? Dion, we thank you for all that you do, not only for UTC, but for the Chattanooga community at large. We are here today to rededicate this building in honor of a man who dedicated his entire life to serving others. Mr. James R. Mapp was at the heart of many Chattanooga initiatives to call for equal opportunity and equal treatment under the law to all people. Mr. Mapp is remembered for his tireless fight to open doors of educational opportunity to all students, but he also addressed other issues pertaining to equal employment, access to fair housing, health care, voters' rights, civil rights, and many other areas that impacted discrimination throughout our city, state, and region. He rightly became the moral compass of the Chattanooga community. I might note here that Mr. Mapp was also a member of the university's uh, Chancellor's Multicultural Advisory Council, and he kind of kept us on our toes as well <laughs> relative to inclusion and really what that really meant. UTC's strategic plan has four main goals. Goal number four is to embrace diversity and inclusion as a path to excellence and societal change. This is a goal to which we are committed with a passion. UTC is proud to be Chattanooga's university, and we know that educational attainment has long been recognized as a pathway to achievement and success for individuals as well as communities. Mr. Mapp understood this philosophy, and like him, the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga embraces this idea and strives to bring higher education access to our entire community, state, and region. Throughout his lifetime, Mr. Mapp recognized that education was essential for economic, social, and political liberation. In 1960, Mr. Mapp filed a desegregation lawsuit that lasted for well over 26 years and provided the guiding principles to all of us to bring equal opportunity to all students in Chattanooga Public Schools. As I look around this room today, many of us in this room are still benefactors of his courage and commitment to embrace inclusion and fair play. As was captured in the documentaries, Nine United, the desegregation of the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga, Mr. Mapp was also instrumental in bringing integration to the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga campus. Despite threats to himself and his family, Mr. Mapp remained committed to social justice in Chattanooga. His leadership and vision set the tone for the civil rights movement in Chattanooga. The James R. Mapp building is the front door to our campus from the M.L. King community. It is a physical representation of our partnership with and in the neighborhood of the M.L. King neighborhood, as we're looking forward to even stronger ties with the Bessie Smith Cultural Center and all communities that attach to the University of Tennessee. We are proud to be a part of Chattanooga's Innovation District, and this building provides us an opportunity for continued community engagement, to become a community resource in the areas of advanced manufacturing and technology transfer, we are exploring ways to uh, uh, best practices to make this occur, while we're also using the name uh, on the James Mapp Building to meet the needs of the students, faculty, and staff here at the University of Tennessee as well. Our physical therapy and occupational therapy departments have moved into new state-of-the-art facilities within this building. They are in teaching and learning laboratories specifically designed to teach them how to serve patient needs 
in living, working, and playing. Many of the faculty and students within these programs are present here today, and we invite you to tour these grand facilities. Part of the facility is also being reserved to house the operations of continuing education and our College of Business Professional Leadership Training Programs. These programs bring high quality leadership and professional development opportunities to companies and individuals throughout the Chattanooga area. It also connects our university to the delivery of educational training and attainment for Chattanooga and the region. I'm, I'm, I'm very confident that Mr. Mapp would be pleased and approve of such uses. And so, it is fitting that we honor James R. Mapp as we rededicate this building to honor his life, his outstanding work, and his legacy. A legacy that will never, never be forgotten. The function of this building has changed from its original use, but in transformation and repurposing, it still serves the needs of others and recognizes a pioneer and a visionary who broke the ground on this campus in Chattanooga and the state of Tennessee and made history for this, uh, this region that we serve. We're honored here today to officially name this building the James R. Mapp Building at the University of Tennessee, Chattanooga. Thank you. Well, um, thanks, Richard. That was that was fantastic. So we appreciate you, and as well as Dion and and the work that she does. It is an honor to be here today as part of this, and uh, particularly because, as I'm going to talk about a little bit later, um, along with Dr. Brown and, and Joanne Favors, uh, I got to be the Senate sponsor of the original naming of the MAP building just a few years ago, and now to be at the rededication. Number one, it's, it's awesome. Number two is I am old. <laughs> when you're both at the, the original dedication and at the rededication, you are officially old. Um, uh, the... Um, I, I want to say a big thank you to, to a lot of the people in the room. Let's start with somebody who, without the work of James Mapp and his contemporaries, I couldn't say this, but for the first time in public, I'll say our city council chair, Moses Freeman, right? It's fantastic to, to, uh, to have him here and to understand that the work that uh, he was doing um, over the course of the last several decades continues today and, and certainly the honor that we have for, for Mr. Mapp continues. Uh, our city council person, Russell Gilbert, who works so hard on behalf of our city and has for many years, please give him a round of applause. We, we appreciate him being here. We've got our current city judge, Russell Bean, and our former city judge, Walter Williams, and uh, we know that these are two people who care deeply about justice. Thank you for being here, judges. And then finally, I just want to say uh, to the Matt family, um, to get a chance to talk about uh, your husband, dad, grandfather uh, a couple of times is, is fantastic for me. I've now had that opportunity to do that in front of y'all a few times and uh, very moving for me. You know, um, one of the first times that I remember, at least remember encountering Mr. Mapp was during my first campaign, and you have a campaign, you, know, you have a list of people, you're gonna go out and knock on their doors. I remember seeing James Mapp's name on there. Now, I'd never been elected to anything before in my life. I didn't know him, but I knew to be scared to knock on that door. <laughs> and I was worried about what was gonna happen when this kid who had never done anything, never been in office, was gonna knock on James Mapp's door and ask for his vote. But I did it, but I did it, and I learned that I should not have been so scared because if there's one thing that I learned over the course of the, never, the next few years about Mr. Mapp is that he valued progress over personality. Yes. He valued progress over personality. Think about the things that, uh, that Dr. Brown was talking about with his life. He did that again and again and again. And he always understood that the cause was more important than him, 
than the people around them and that everything else. So all of us sitting here today benefit from the fact that someone was willing to take on, take on so many tasks, not once, not twice, not for a year, not for two years, not for a decade, but over the course of a lifetime to continue to do this work. Um, I told you uh, that uh, I carried the bill to make this building called uh, uh, the James Mapp Building the first time, and, and you all heard this story a, a, a couple months ago. Um, but uh, I did that, Mr. Mapp sent me a nice note, and he was handwritten and said thank you for naming the, the building uh, after me, and uh, it was wonderful. And then uh, I voted a way he didn't like, and then he called me up and said he didn't like the way I voted. <laughs> All right? Which, which was great. And the point again is, I didn't take that personally, because I understood that what he cared about was progress. And if he thought that it wasn't progress, he didn't care who you were, or what you, what you had said before, we still had to make progress as a community. And so he was going to keep driving that forward every single day. And that was while I was in the Senate. I became mayor in 2013. Uh, my recollection is that at the time, uh, Mr. Mapp was 85 years old. Does that, uh, that sound about right? And he, was, he became chair after I was mayor of the NAACP again because he knew that this work never ends. It does not end. It won't end in my lifetime, and unfortunately, it won't end in yours. But he was going to do that work at 85 years old with the same passion and determination that he did at 25 years old. And that is inspiring to me. That is inspiring. That Forget the things that he was doing, which are incredible. Forget everything else to continue to have that drive to improve your community, your state, your country throughout your life, the energy and determination, it's inspiring. The last thing that uh, I just want to say about this is that um, uh, Dr. Brown noted that, that this is in the middle, this building is in the middle of the uh, innovation district. And UTC um, is in constant thought about how to best utilize this for innovation. One of the great innovators in our city's history is James Mapp. Now I realize that he didn't build an iPhone and he didn't put together an app. What he did was wrestle with the community problems of the day and talk about the solutions that could drive us forward in a way that at the time the community's own leaders weren't addressing. And that's innovation. That's, that's change. And so I can't think of a more appropriate name for the heart of our innovation district than to carry on the legacy of James Mapp. Thank you all very much. know a little bit but how I know I knew came to know the maps how I came to name the building and I added a charge I'm going to give you All right. now I've always known the map I grew up in Bushtown that's where Mr. Mapp grew up Reverend I was a little girl running around at Archinaw Baptist Church when he was a little boy running around at Archinaw Baptist Church. And over there at Archinaw Baptist Church is where Ralph Cochran, chief, the first black chief, was running around. A whole lot of us were running around. It was a wonderful community. Remember, I made it one. And remember the time. Families intact. Daddies and mamas and neighbors. One big community. And a lot of love at church for all of us. Everybody told us, C.B. Robinson, all the rest, shut up, sit down. <laughs> it was wonderful. So it was no, no surprise 
when Mr. Matt brought his beautiful bride home. And the, when little Tommy got back from college, she met her. And they stopped and said, honey, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Little Tommy, by the way, I think that they thought because they called me little Tommy. Mm -hmm. Little Tommy, what are you doing? Nothing. I go home, I go to work, I come home. There's a change that story, because we're coming by and picking you up and taking you to the NAACP meeting. And I like to say the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> and contrary to what you may believe, I really didn't have that much contact though, with Mr. Miller. It was Mrs. Miller who took us younger women and women under her arms. She taught us, she taught me so much about taking minutes and doing books and just all kinds of stuff. It was wonderful. It was learning. She was so wonderful. She given and caring. And that's one thing you do. You might miss. You have to understand one more time. The time period. Women, what do we do? We shut up and we were seen. Not very much. So I was not a big thing in the end of their seat. But I wanted to get something done. Who did I whisper? I told Ms. Mel. She got it done. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> all right. It was fun to be there with C.D. Robertson and all the others there because we learned and had a lot as young people. And I carried it on and they continued the relationship. So over the years, that's how I grew to love and respect all of the family. Some of the babies I got to even carry on my knees. <laughs> all right. Now, that's how I knew them. But also, I was there during those dastardly days yeah. on the NAACP who we had, where the thing was not nice. I was there in the neighborhood. My dad was one of the men who had to carry the shotguns at night that had to guard the communities. We had to, in the families in the community, we had to get on the floor and turn out all the lights because they were threatening to kill not only the maps but everybody else and all the men in the community had to guard the community. That's how I know the maps. That's how I know them and love them one by one. So, so it's no strange reason that little Tommy, when she got the chance to go to Nashville, would take in her hip pocket the idea of naming a state building after Mr. The Mayor. No, no strange. It started in 1992. And one man who knows it, he's sitting right there, Richard Brown. He was a keeper of the secret. <coughs> I could not tell anybody what my plan was and how I was going to try to work my plan. There were five men, not a one at this time and not a one in African American, who kept the secret and worked the plan. We had a problem. The mayor already told you about the problem. You couldn't. Retired Mr. Mapp and he wouldn't zip his lip. <laughs> and there was an honest, uh, and, and when you name buildings, because they refused to name a school building, I promised Deborah Mapp that I, uh, Matthews I would do what? I would name a building because she could not name a school building. The school board said they died and go to hell before his name, before they would put his name on the school building. I said, you may own the school building, but I'll put his name on the state building. <laughs> <laughs> so, the three men who ran interference for me, put their arms around me. The man who helped me understand everything that was saying over those years, the man sitting right there. He was an expert on buildings and state buildings and how you work the system. All that. Dr. Richard Brown. And those guys did the job they had to do. Mr. Mel, we had to convince people he was harmless. No, every other day he was on the front page. Right? <laughs> and he was suing somebody. <laughs> <laughs> and I can tell you now, when the bill finally was cut, and I was not a part in the room when all the things came down, and they, we got the bill, the building, to name. Mr. Mims. He gave the information to the governor. And the governor was sitting there reading. And he said, hmm, this is a 
understand how his name is on the bill. And he kept reading. And he said, is this gentleman still alive? <laughs> we said, yes, Governor. He said, I'll sign this. I had something this. <laughs> it was meant to be. Yeah. It was meant to be. It was meant. And God was in the plan. Yeah. And I know that. And so it took a lot of us. And as you know, no bill gets passed in the legislature without both the senator, the Senate, and the House. And so jointly, when the bill was ready, we passed it on to the mayor of the city, who did what he was supposed to do. <laughs> he got it passed in the city. Okay. That's how I knew. Now, the charged key. Charged key. So you got the bill. And we thank you from the, I did from the bottom of my heart. And if Deborah Matthews used to be here, she would be the happiest woman, the happiest person. Because we know. And Long Glass, it really has the right home. His name is on an ed a building relating to education. He loved it. Every one of his children, in spite of it all, have college degrees. Do you understand me? So it's home. Now I say to you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> All you did with tips and the university. You have a charge to keep. You haven't earned it yet. You haven't earned it yet. It's a loan to you. You got to earn it. With Map's name on this bill, it overlooking the ML King. The architects came to represent do you understand when the sun is in a certain position? Face it, Emma King, it cast a shadow over the building that Mr. Matt worked in 40 or more years. Do you understand that? Do you understand the beauty of this and the portrait and all of this? And I said, no, I didn't. Thank you for telling me. <laughs> okay. As his name sits there, it is blinking out of code to the whole community now. Understand what you got yourself into. The entire community. James R. Mann. It is saying that this institution knows no respected person. That it doesn't matter what your zip code is, where you came from, or how much money you've got. This is the place for you. We want you. It, his name, code the code, taps out a code, and every black youngster, poor youngster, anywhere, <coughs> and all the others, will eventually feel and know that the invisible fence, oh, I know that hurts your family, the invisible fence around this institution has at long last come down. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. you understand? You've got all of the knowledge. You've got criminal justice, sociology, you've got psychology, you've got economics, everything on this campus. And you tell me you don't know how to help this community stop young children from committing genocide out there. Yes, knowledge is here. And it's your job to help us and help the mayor of the city, the county commission, and all the others in the community to solve this. Don't make me have to call Vanderbilt and ask them to send somebody in to help me. <laughs> they make some Now the maps. Now faculty, tell these people, this is 2016. It's time to stop waiting for the, them to come to you. Take the education on this campus out there. <laughs> Tell me the state can do it, you can do it. Earn your right to be the keeper of the name, James R. Man. And from the bottom of my heart, I thank you. Thank you for caring and listening. I thank each of you who had a decision to make as to whether or not the name would transfer. You do not know what an awesome gift you have given to this community. God bless you. Thank you.
Wow. I, um, <laughs> and I, uh, I knew I was didn't want to follow the mayor, and, 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 and Dr. Brown is somebody I never wanted to follow. <laughs> um, we've been that way all through the years, Dr. Brown. And you, you've always done it. Um, let me just add one title, if I may, to. Um, the uh, introduction that Dion gave to me. Uh, I'm also the first recipient of the James R. Maps Family Citizen of the Year Award uh, in honor of James R. Mapp, and I was delighted to receive that award several months ago this year. Uh, it, it, it was a delightful event, and. Uh, it carried me for quite some time. I think I have a lot more pep in my step uh, and have been a lot more alert since I received it because it, it, it meant so much to me, someone who had admired from afar the work of Mr. Matt, the courage of Mr. Matt. Uh, and, and for that reason, uh, I guess I summarized uh, my thoughts about him in a little different way uh, than most would talk. Now, you've heard about uh, what he did and how he did it, uh, but you need to have the perspective of who this man was, who he was. And uh, I would start out by telling you that, historically speaking, there are a lot of men who have made Chattanooga great. And when the roles are called for all the prominent people who have made Chattanooga a progressive community for all of its people, you can bet your bottom dollar that James R. Mapp name will be one of those names that will always be called forever. He didn't just uh, manufacture some product, but he did, he molded the spirit of a people. He uplifted people. He gave all of us courage, black and white alike, to fight the fight, to bring this whole message to the front that there is a better day that equality is something that we all should fight for. So we should listen to who he is. James R. Mapp, a servant of the people, a man of honor, a man of integrity, a man of compassion, a man of courage, a humble man, yet one who stood proudly and righteously and holler and preach for justice and liberty and above all else, equality. A strong family man, yet a community-wide leader. A man with a very small and wide smile on his face at all times, but a man with a strong backbone didn't back down to anybody. A Boy Scout leader, a Sunday school teacher, a worshiper of God above all else. And I'm proud to speak of Dr. James R. Mapp in that language so that we can know the fabric of who he was. And that's whose name is on this building. And I'm equally proud of the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga, Dr. Brown, and to all of the faculty members who chose to rededicate and to keep this name on this building. And as quiet as it kept, 
there were a lot of us who were concerned when the name this building was closed so soon after we had dedicated it to him. It was closed. But we should have known that Dr. Engel and you and the great team that you all have here at the university would do what you have done, which is to rededicate. So while we are proud of Dr. Mapp, uh, James Mapp, we are equally proud of the university. And it speaks in, for all of us in the future to know that this is a match made in heaven, that this university, with this name, in this building, in this location, on this street, in this district, is going to be a great university one day that all of our kids will want to come here and enjoy. There's a lot of research to be done in the name of James R. Mapp where kids will learn who he was, what he did. There are a lot of dissertations to be written, a lot of theses to be developed, a lot of research to be done, over and beyond what the family has put together. They worked diligently to come up with uh, some sayings in history of their father. Uh, this is what has happened to us, and this is a great day for us, a glorious day for us. And I'm just so proud and happy that I could be here to say a few great words for a great university, for a great city, and a district that I represent, and for a man that I admired all my life. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. My name is Brenda Hackett, uh, Brenda Mapp Hackett. I'm the oldest daughter of James R. Mapp and Viola Mapp. And I know that both of them would be very proud um, of this building and the rededication of the building to them. First of all, having worked as a rehab nurse for several years, I truly appreciate the collaborative nature of restoring patients and clients to their optimum health and the contribution that occupational therapy and physical therapy make are very significant. It's very fitting that this building bears my father's name. Just as OT and PT help people to overcome the devastation of illness and trauma and get back on their feet, both literally and figuratively, my father was dedicated to helping the African American community overcome the devastation of racism and oppression. OT and PT give the opportunity to be self-sufficient for people to be self-sufficient and achieve they be the best they can. Opening opportunities for jobs, education, participation in the political process, etc., has been a catalyst for African Americans to achieve and what my father worked for. Humble yet courageous, Mr. Mapp, as most people called him, <laughs> stood in the gap for the rights of his family and the community. He was not seeking fame or fortune, but just wanted to serve his people. I'd like to take just a minute, if you don't mind, to introduce the family because he was very much a family man, as he said. And uh, I'd like to start with Miss Betty Mapp. Well, do you mind? Okay. And she has been, beside my father, very supportive of him. And her son, Jimmy Jacks, would you stand? And I'll kind of go down the list if you don't mind me taking just a minute. <laughs> okay. Deborah Mapp Embry, Dr. Deborah. Uh, and her family, if you would stand, please. Obiora Najani, Michael Lee Mapp Duckworth is next. John Mapp and Ventra. Angela Mapp and her family. And in this case, we have her children and their children. Would 
you all stand, please? <laughs> okay. Uh, Tony Mapp and Kim and your family. Okay, Maya and the kids. Who am I missing? Um, Alicia Mapp. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. And last but not least, our baby sister, Ivan Eddie, Ivan Eddie, <laughs> And let me tell you, this is just a tiny fraction of our family, <laughs> okay? We have other kids who are in college and, you know, they're not, we're not close enough to be able to come. But, and I do hope that we'll be able to get a video of this so that we can share it with them, okay? In his wisdom, my father knew the importance of history and knowing your past to build on the future. As such, he decided to put in writing his knowledge and insight. He started in 2005, along with the assistance of the late Dr. Barbara Medley, who was on faculty here at UTC, the director of the Center for Applied Social Research. Although Dr. Medley was only able to work with him a short time, and they had grand plans. I tell you, we saw some of them uh, written uh, not long ago that we discovered. Although they had uh, grand plans, she was only able to work with him a short while, but he continued on. He learned computer skills at the age of 76, well enough to receive and respond to emails, and to type on his manuscript. My sister and I, and it was really my sister, Michael Lee, who I think did the most as far as teaching him the computer and everything and how to use it. And he even sometimes did a little surfing on the web. For eight years, he continued his research and writing. So, though he didn't live to see his finished product, today we do have it available for you. Chance or Circumstance, a memoir and journey through the struggle for civil rights was totally written by my father, James R. Matt. After Dr. Mantley wasn't able to continue, my sister and I, Michael Lee, just helped to organize the more than 300 pages of manuscript that he had so that it could get into a final book. Uh, he lived to see most of the process, and for any of you who've ever written, it does take a little while, <laughs> um, but unfortunately he didn't live to see the final product. I would, however, like to present a copy of this book and this is the unveiling at this point. Thankfully, the publisher was able to get some to us before, you know, so that we could bring them today. And I wanted to present it to Dr. Engel, but in his stead, Dr. Brown. I'll make sure the dean of the libraries gets this. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, by the way, it is available on uh, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, um, and through the publisher, iUniverse. If and we do have some copies here of the paperback only. Unfortunately, there was a little bit of a glitch with the hardback, so we weren't able to get what we actually wanted today. Okay. Um, Okay, I think I have said most of what I wanted to say. Um, and then I do want to speak for the family to say thank you, University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. Thank you to all the persons, many of whom spoke today, who have been behind our father, um, worked with him, like you said, understood him, when sometimes you say, well, why is he asking for this or that? And as you said, when he, when, if he thought something was right, he stood for it. You know, he did not back off. So thank you so much for bestowing this honor upon our father, James R. Mann. This means his legacy will definitely continue on. Thank you. Let's give another round of applause for this family. You know, 
I actually grew up in Chattanooga and grew up in the Bushtown neighborhood. So the Mapp family was really the family of the neighborhood. <laughs> All the children there were really shepherded by the Mapp family, so we knew them very, very well. But growing up in Chattanooga, I was very, very much aware that James Mapp and his efforts to end discrimination did not happen in a vacuum. He was never alone in his work. Mrs. Viola Mapp was also there and very much present sometimes vis uh, visibly standing at his side and other times quietly in the background, but always solidly supporting James Mapp. The death threats targeting Mr. Mapp were also aimed at Mrs. Viola as well. She truly was the Chattanooga mother of civil rights. Mrs. Viola was also his partner. In every sense of the word, Mr. Mapp was able to focus his attention on civil rights campaigns because he knew Mrs. Viola had everything under control at home, including these boys that she <laughs> had to keep in line, a very firm hand there. She was beautiful and eloquent in both presence and spirit. She was a strong and effective communicator. Often we would hear her speak and just marvel at the words and how she could put together words. And for many organizations and causes were benefited from her leadership. Mrs. Viola was dedicated to education as well and was a leader in the PTA at the local, state, and national levels. She loved young people enormously an important trait for a mother of eight. <laughs> While Mr. Mapp's passion seemed to focus on large-scale issues of discrimination and equality, Mrs. Viola waged her own battles in smaller ways, undergirded by the principles of fairness and honesty. When Mr. Mapp's oldest daughter was getting married, <laughs> yes, we remembered that. <laughs> She wanted her photo to appear in the society section of our local newspaper, just like other new brides. <laughs> Mrs. Viola called the Chattanooga Times editor, and one more small but important racial barrier was knocked down. I suspect that there is no one better to remember Mrs. Viola Mapp than her husband James. In the introduction of his book, Chance or Circumstance, if you read a memoir and a journey through the struggle for civil rights, James described his precious, and he called her Vi. To the memory of my late wife, he writes, for 46 years and four months. Very precise guy. Mrs. Viola Martin Mapp. She was the best companion a husband could have, the greatest mother children could hope for, and a delight to her late parents and her siblings. Vi, as I called her, embodied the kind of love that never dies. She was full of compassion and love for humanity and with the love for her people. She possessed a vision and foresight which she used for the benefit of others. Vi was the kindest and gentlest of women, with a hint of firmness. <laughs> Though she worked in a quiet way, there was also a streak of activism that became very evident to others. It is my hope and prayer that herein will be encouragement and inspiration for all young women because of her walk, her talk, her activism, her attitude, and the respect that she commanded." End of quote. <laughs> and so it becomes my great honor to announce that the main conference room within the James R. Mapp building is being hereby dedicated to the memory of Mrs. Viola Mapp.
That room will be appropriately named in her honor. Mrs. Fowle was a great communicator and was known for making sure everyone had a seat at the table. So we can hope that the discussions occurring in this room will reflect her presence, her grace, and her guidance. Please be sure you visit the room as we exit this place. Thank you very kindly. I think it'd be safe to assume that most of you coming here today knew about Mr. Mapp's life. But if you didn't, you got a history lesson today. And you can truly understand why the James R. Matt building was rededicated in his honor. And thank you, Dr. Brown, for announcing about the naming of the conference room as well. Certainly well deserved. So with that, we invite you to stay with us after this official portion of the program. We have food and activities throughout the building. So please take time to visit with the students, watch their demonstrations, view the exhibits, and have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you so much for coming out. <laughs>